every Sunday just living good. Might do a little fishing, a little hunting on the weekend. With a bow, I'll be sneaking back in the woods. A little bit crazy, every now and then maybe. Like to kick off my boots and get lazy, but I'm living good, yeah. This week's episode of Pathfinder Journal is brought to you by Self-Reliance Outfitters, The Pathfinder School, Duluth Pack, Battle Horse Knives, Short Lane Arms, Lansky Sharpeners, Survival Resources, Carbon TV, and SurvivalLife.com. Morning, folks. Welcome to another episode of Pathfinder Outdoor Journal. As we begin to explore our forefathers, the pioneers and frontiersmen of the past, we're going to start in the 1700s period prior to the Revolutionary War. We're going to look at the gear that they carried, the clothing they wore, how they procured meat, and all those types of things that allowed them to be wilderness self-reliant. Jean-Jacques Cousteau wrote in 1750 that civilization truly began the first time a man set boundaries on a piece of land and said this is mine and then found others foolish enough to believe it. So let's first look at the clothing worn by our ancestors, the frontiersmen and the woodsmen of the 1750s. If you look at the writings of Joseph Doddridge and the writings in Seed Time on the Cumberland, you see that the younger men chose to dress or emulate their dress very closely to the Native Americans. And I think that's typical of what we see today. Our teenagers tend to emulate the dress of their heroes. Clothing of the time period was very simple. In fact, if you owned more than two sets of clothing, you were said to be well off. A sign of your wealth would be the hunting shirts that you had hanging like tapestry in your cabin along the frontier. And at Fort Boonesboro, hunters and frontiersmen of the time people who lived within that settlement were issued or given one set of clothing per year. The typical pant of the period was the button fly or drop front breech. And it was a short pant that came just below knee level and fastened with some type of button or tie at that point, buttoned up the front or buttoned with a square fall front. And then had some type of an adjustment string on the back to make it tighter or looser. So it was kind of one size fits many. The typical material of these pants was generally linen. Sometimes they were made of wool, Osnenberg, and sometimes cotton, but cotton would have been a very expensive material at the time, and only the well-to-do would have had cotton. There's also mention in journals and ledgers of these breeches being made from types of leather like brain tan. If you were dressing in Native American fashion, you would have worn, instead of the breeches, you would have worn what was called a breech clout. And it was basically a piece of broadcloth, about 18 inches wide, about 40 inches long, depending on how big you were. And it basically just swaddled your crotch area and your tail end around, came up through a belt, and then flapped over the front, almost like you'd hang a dish towel in your kitchen. And they, again, were typically made of some type of animal skin or hide like brain tan. Sometimes they were made of broad cloths like linen as well as wool. That would have been typical Native American style dress. And then a hunting shirt would have been worn over the top of that. This segment of Pathfinder Outdoor Journal is brought to you by... Hi, I'm John McCann from Survival Resources. We specialize in custom survival kits, all the components necessary to build your own survival kit and emergency preparedness products. Check us out at survivalresources.com. Many woodsmen of the period would wear stockings below the breeches, and they were basically made of wool, silk, and things of that nature. These happened to be wool, and they would go up above knee level, and you would pull the breech down below to the area where your calf is right below your knee, and you would either tie or fasten the breech there and that would give you your lower leg protection if you were not wearing leggings. Oftentimes hunters would wear what was called a legging. And a legging was a piece of outerwear that would help not only to provide a microclimate for their skin to keep them warm, and keep it protected, but also to avoid 
tearing up their clothing and stockings with the thorns and the briars of the eastern woodlands. And the legging was typically just a tube of material or leather that was worn from just at the level of your boot or moccasin up to your knee, just above the knee here and guarded off. Or sometimes it would come all the way up and be looped around a belt here and be cut low here. And it was just a tube. Sometimes they had a flap on them, sometimes they didn't. But that was a typical thing that would be worn if you were in the woods, if you're doing a trek or if you're doing a scout. That would be something you typically wear to protect the clothing that you had. Stockings were expensive. Linen materials to make breeches was expensive. So those leggings helped not only to protect your skin, but also to protect that clothing that was so precious that would have to be repaired if it was torn up. Footwear in the frontier period was always an issue. Shoes of the period were really not made for walking through the woods trying to climb the side of a hill, going through muddy clay-based soil and things like that. Shoes of the period were what they called straight lasted. There was really no left and no right. You just had to wear them until you had a left and a right. So basically it was just a straight leather soled, sewn, hobnailed shoe. The soles are very slick, very non-conducive to walking through a wilderness area. Shoes were worn nonetheless in the wilderness and they were bought many times from trading posts by long hunters and travelers and things of that nature, but they were not the only shoe that was worn during the period. The moccasin is what we hear the most about in the frontier era and this is a typical pair of buffalo hide, what they call pucker toe moccasins. And the biggest problem that moccasins had along the frontier was they were in constant need of repair. There are lots and lots of stories about frontiersmen who had to repair their moccasins in front of the fire every night. There are stories of Indian war bundles that were captured that contained 30 to 40 sets of moccasins alone that were being carried for the war party. So extra moccasins were always something you had to have. Luckily for the 18th century woodsman, he was able to pretty much shoot deer at will. There are stories of men shooting deer on horseback, shooting up to 20 deer without moving their horse. This is a Fort Ligonier shoe pack type moccasin. This is called the Ligonier moccasin because a remnant of this boot was dug up at Fort Ligonier. And basically it is a center seam type moccasin with a sewed on sole and a wool lining. And this would have been something very typically worn as well during the colder months of the year if someone were choosing to wear more of a Native American style dress or something that could be easily repaired. And again, when you're talking about normal shoes, they're not easily repaired in the wild, where moccasins were easily manufactured and easily repaired as long as you had plenty of deer hide. It's been written during the period that wearing moccasins was only a civilized way of going barefoot. And many of the frontiersmen suffered from rheumatism and arthritis at an early age. And there are stories of them sleeping with their feet toward the fire and their head away from the fire instead of sleeping long ways to the fire so that they could get the maximum amount of heat to their feet every night so that they could even walk the next day. This is a riding boot from the 18th century and it would have been available along the frontier especially had you been a prior service officer or something like that during the French and Indian War. But again these were made for riding horses not really made for trekking through the woods. They had the same straight lasted slick sole on them but someone who had a pair of boots like this would have been well to do by comparison in a settlement. 